All right, I got some brake components off here. Didn't uh, take you along for the ride there. Uh, here's the slider bolts and where they go into the back of the caliper. I just threaded them back in there so you could see where they go. Got a little magnet tray here to keep this stuff from skating around in the dirt. You definitely the slider bolts, you don't want to get them in the dirt. Uh, all right, one little thing I ran into. The bolts that run through the back of the steering knuckle that hold this bracket on. Um, there's a 17 millimeter floppy fit. 15 won't go on. Guess what size it is? It's a 16. I have three socket sets and none of them have a 16 millimeter bolt uh, socket in there. I don't have 16 millimeter wrenches either. Um, is this some sort of ploy to keep people from working on their own stuff? I have no idea. Um, and if you know socket set manufacturers decided to you know let's save some space or you know in the case and we can't afford to fit all the sockets in there or we want to you know find a way to save some costs we'll only put in the ones that get used the most often is is that a thing i don't know nobody talked to me so i've done here what i normally discourage i've got an imperial socket on this bolt head but you know what that fits so minty it won't even fall off, right? So 5 8 fits perfect on there. In fact, there was a bit of a rust haze on the outside of this. I almost had to drive it on with a hammer. Uh, something else that I've talked about before in another video, when you're removing bolts that go all the way through, notice that the outer tip of this bolt is rusty. It actually passes all the way through the steering, steering knuckle and it protrudes out the back. So when you go to loosen this, you know, you'll crack it, you'll get it to start, but then remember you'll have a little button of rust on the end here. So don't go yanking the thing out. Um, sneak some cut, um, penetrating fluid back in there. I got some power lube here. Um, get some fluid on it. Um, loosen it out a couple turns, put it back in. Out a couple, back in. And work it back and forth because that whole surface out here is actually increased in diameter a little bit because of the rust and you got to drag it through its threads um, you don't want to try and power it out you, you could risk breaking it off then you're really into a world of hurt uh, dealing with that okay um, okay so we're a little closer we're down to our rotor and our rattly dust shield okay the rotor is held on with a little set screw right there And these things get full of rust as well. And you can't really put anything in there to keep it from rusting. I mean, you can't put a blob of grease in there. Remember that this is your brake rotor. Uh, this part gets insanely hot. This is right beside it. By the way, if you have a draggy brake, if your caliper is dragging, uh, your rotor is going to be hot all the time. And um, you'll smell it when you come to a stop sign or a traffic light. You'll smell the, the, the odor of hot brakes, right? Um, don't do this in traffic, obviously, but once you've driven a little bit, pull over to a safe location, stop, get out and do a walk around, and carefully touch the rim of your, uh, of your wheel. And if you find a hot rim, you found the one that's dragging. Because heat travels just, you know, in the same manner not by the same means, but it travels through conductors, just like electricity travels through conductors. So the heat from this part of the rotor goes to that part of the rotor. Guess what bolts on here? Your wheel rim. And if your wheel rim's aluminum, <clears throat> aluminum is a really, really efficient conductor of heat, and it'll suck heat out of this and absorb it into itself. You can actually have a tire pressure monitor triggered by a draggy brake which might sound insane, but if you think about it, it makes sense. Hot rotor, hot hub, hot rim, the air inside your tire is actually going to expand because the rim is hot. Not in every case, but, and probably not in the winter because your tire is being cooled by contacting a cool road surface. But if this was happening in the, in the summertime where you got outside temperatures that are climbing anyways, and I believe I've got this right, 
that uh, eight degrees of Celsius uh, change produces one, one PSI of air pressure change. So if you go from zero to 24 degrees, that'll generate three PSI of air pressure. Um, you can possibly create a situation here with a draggy brake where your tire will actually increase in PSI to the point that it's actually overinflated and may trigger a tire pressure monitor. So there's a random one for you. Okay, that little screw, is it a Torx or is it a, oops, is it a Torx or is it an Allen? Okay, when it's full of rust, you can't tell. You better get it right. So there's your Torx. And uh, so I used some brake cleaner and I used my pick tool and it went in there and I could only find six splines, okay? A Torx has more than, well, they've got six, but they don't, they don't have the flats in between. They got the grooves in between. And whereas the Allen has six points and six flats. So you can get a Torx into the fitting that's meant for this. You won't do it the other way around usually. You'll get a Torx in here, but then if you uh, strip that in there, because it's not meant to be there, if you strip it, now what are you gonna do? Now you're into a half an hour or an hour of drilling and some sort of extraction tool to get that thing out of there. Um, just take the extra minute to clean it out. Um, when I put that Torx bit in there, this is a T40, um, it's got a bit of play to it, right? And that's all I need to see to tell me that it's wrong. And then if I go up, next size up is T45, and it doesn't even start. So I know it's not a T45, and I know it's not a T40, because that's just too sloppy. Um, and what I did find is that the, uh, I believe this is a five, nope, it's a six, six millimeter Allen, okay? Now it was a bit of a snug fit, but I'll take that. Just tap it in, I already cleaned it out. Tap it in to make sure it seats, okay? Um, spoiler alert, I already loosened it, okay? This is the reveal, okay? We're gonna see what's going on back here. Notice that the brake rotor comes away. Um, notice as well, by the way, you can actually see the signature for where the rim sat on the hub uh, of the rotor here. <clears throat> and when I reassemble, I normally put anti-seize on these surfaces as well. Just lets the rim release off the brakes a little nicer. And if you're ever on the road and you get a flat and you got to do a roadside wheel change, you're going to be so happy that this wheel comes off easily because the alternative is going to make you really unhappy at the side of the road in the rain, in the middle of the night. Okay, there's the little set screw that holds that on. Here comes the rotor. And let's see what's going on back here. All right, so as I expected to see, we've got corrosion, okay? These, this little, it's a pie plate, right? And it's completely corroded away from its bolt heads. There's two up here. There's one up near the front, and there's one down below down here. Uh, here's your hub assembly right there, okay? So, and this thing won't fit over top. I mean, I'd have to take the whole hub apart. I am not doing that just for this thing. Um, one option is get, a, get the cutting tool of your choice and hack off this little part here and take the thing off and throw it away and uh, don't use it. Option B is I'm going to loosen up these bolts and I'm going to make some sort of a washer sandwich scenario here and put it back on. Okay, I'm going to clean this up with the wire wheel and I'm going to reuse it. Um, if you look at the size of this opening here, it looks like this thing's been chattering for a little while. So, like I said in the other part of the video series, uh, when you drive with your windows up, you just don't hear this stuff. Um, so some of these sorts of sounds can make your hair go white and send you running to the garage. Um, this is not a, you know, risk. There's zero risk to safety here other than that your peace of mind is distracted and maybe that's a safety thing. Um, 
Something else that I've seen when you do wheel changes and you take your wheel off, uh, sometimes the wheel rim comes down and lands right on top of this. Um, and that, you know, if you're doing spring and fall tire rotations to go from summers to winters and winters to summers, uh, you're changing your, your wheels twice a year. And they're heavy. And if you don't do this every day, um, and if you're not like an ox, then when you pull that wheel off, it's going to drop. And the inside portion of the wheel rim will fall right on that. And I've seen where they bend. And then they run into the rotor. So when you do a wheel tire change, um, put your wheel on. Before you even take it off the jack, give it a spin and see if you've created a sound for yourself. Okay. Um, higher mileage vehicles as well, they tend to... They'll get some of these get really crumbly and they start breaking all apart into nothing and and so they're really easy to it's really easy to get a noise out of them. I had uh, one vehicle I diagnosed the velocity of the wind coming in from the front was enough to cause the dust shield to rattle and it would hit the rotor at highway speeds but then when you slow it down the wind speed slowed down and it didn't hear the brake. It didn't hit the brake rotor, and it had enough bolts on it that it wouldn't rattle. Um, but then, when you got up to a highway speed, it would start to flap around, and it would hit the rotor. Um, stuff like that's kind of tricky to diagnose. Um, but this is well within the ability of an entry-level um, do-it-yourself or, or technician, um, and you can save yourself a little bit of money here instead of going to a garage and paying garage rates for this. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to do my repair and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done.